You're really gonna scream right here in my camera? Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and today, don't look at this, don't think of totes. You're going, oh no, I don't want to grow in a tote. Okay, let's talk about issues that some of you have because I know we have them too. Gophers. I had a persimmon tree taken out by gophers. I've had fig trees, beautiful. They were small, but I thought one day I went out there and it looked so bad, and I walked over to it and I touched it. There were no roots. The gophers took them out. Well, they do that to our vegetable plants. Not just trees, not just flowers, but they love vegetable plants. Let me tell you a funny story, and then we'll get into this. A neighbor, I don't think he knows anything of what I do on YouTube or anything saw me one day and came over and said, I see you're growing in totes. What do you think about them? I said, I think they're pretty good. I can grow a whole lot more in totes than I can in the ground. And he goes, yeah, we've got gophers all over the place. And I said, well, you know, keep the gophers out. That's, a, that's an idea. My wife told me about totes. She saw somebody on YouTube that grows in a lot of totes. Now, I, I don't think he, <laughs> he goes on the computer much. He comes back. Oh, weeks later, he sees me. He comes back, goes, you know what? She planted stuff in totes, and we got tomatoes and everything growing. He said, let me tell you something. Totes work. I thought it was so funny. I said, yeah, that's really good to know, and I thanked him. And that was the end of the conversation. I don't know them that well. Let me tell you something. Yes, you can put them on chairs, you can put them on benches, you can put them on tables, you can put them on the ground, and you can grow in the tote. And you know how I like to direct the water so I can catch the water because of the way I fill it up. I compost in place. So that water that comes out is amazing. It's just amazing. It's tea for your plants. So when it comes out, I can water other plants. But I don't want to talk about that today because there is something else you can do with the tote. Now they come in all different colors, so don't say I don't like this teal color or whatever. You can get them in gray, you can get them in beige, you can get them any color you want. Think of the tote as your framework. Like square gardening. Think of it as your framework. Where you're going to plant your plants. Now normally in a tote like this, if it's up on a chair, you would put one or maybe two, let's say, zucchini plants. You could put multiple tomato plants. They're, they're better together. You know, they're fine. But when it comes to zucchini, they really pull a lot of food. So usually one is good, two is okay. One is great, two is okay. But now I want you to think of this thing as your framework. Don't think of it as a tote. This one is 18 gallons. Think of it as if you're laying it out in your yard, but you're using this as a spacer. You're only gonna space your plants. You're going, wait a minute, I'm planting in the tote. Give me a second. What you do, if you've got good soil and you can grow in it, but your big issue is let's say gophers, it could also be water issues, but we'll get into that in a few minutes, especially if you're dry. But let's say you have gophers. Gophers, generally, I can't say forever for, for sure because there's always an exception to the rule, do not go through plastic. Their teeth aren't designed to do that. So what you would do if you're only trying to get rid of gophers, she would make good size holes all through the bottom. Don't make too many where it's gonna break apart or something. I would put a good six to eight holes on the bottom. Now, you know, good size holes about the size of a dime, let's say. Don't go too big, because you don't want to make a beautiful little home for a gopher. Six to eight holes on the bottom. You sit it on the ground. Now you fill this with leaves, just like I do mine. I mean, if your soil is good and you want to shovel in the soil, that's fine. But I would fill it with leaves and matter from the garden and kitchen scraps and then top it with some of your native soil. And then I would plant whatever you want to plant. It doesn't have to be squash or tomatoes. It could be beans. It could be anything you want to plant. Potatoes, anything you want. And you plant in here. You can line these up and it would be like a square foot garden. You would know exactly what to plant. But the difference with this is you're not containing the roots. Now keep in mind, I have to put my holes up 
because our issue was the trees all around here. All the trees you see back there, they love the totes because of the food that's in there, you know, the compost tea, as well as water. Water is the big thing here in Southern California because we're really in a drought. So they will send their roots, their feeder roots out, and they will find that hole and they will get in on the bottom. And then what they do is they put their roots in there and they swell it up and they block it. So when I water, it will start to fill on the bottom with a lot of water and they can just drink all day. But if you don't have a tree issue and your main issue is gophers or moles, then what you want to do is put your holes on the bottom and like I said, you plant in here. You don't have to fill it to the top. If you leave a space around, you're kind of giving a collar, which like a collar or a person's collar, you're giving them protection against other insects. Sometimes some rodents, even though yes, they can jump in, but sometimes they're not sure what it is. And you, of course you could stick stakes around it and tool it as well. It gives you more of an option of growing things that you may not be able to grow. The big thing is when the gophers come around to eat your plant, because they like getting towards the top of the plant and eating around the base of the plant, they can't get to it. Because you're going to have about that much soil at least in it. So they're going to come, they're not going to waste their time. They're going to eat a little bit of the roots, but that's really not what they want. They're going to go on. Like my neighbor says now, he can grow a whole bunch of stuff. Well, this is a good way to do it. And on top of that, the other thing I was going to say on this is if you're in a drought area and you don't have a lot of water or you're trying to conserve water, when you water your plants, this is going directly to your plants. Okay, so you've got whatever you're growing in here, whatever vegetable plant you decide to grow flowers. We're not talking about flowers, but yes, you can grow flowers. Whatever vegetable plants you grow in here, they're getting the water. Where if you water on the ground, if you water your plants and this is the ground, and you don't know that underneath the ground there's a crack, ants, other insects, gophers are directing the water away, You'll be watering your plant, but the water ends up down there and your roots don't get it. In here, your roots are going to get the water. Plus, it's always going to have a conserved water under here. There's always going to be water underneath the tote when it's sitting on the ground. So even on the hottest day, though the plants are in here, they're going to have water underneath. Now you're saying, wait a minute, their roots are in here. Their roots won't be in here. As I said, the tree roots around here get into the holes and they will get into the smallest holes. Well, your vegetable plants will do the same thing. As long as you don't have a tree issue, the vegetable plants are gonna send their roots through the holes. Their feeder roots are gonna go out through the holes and they're gonna be feeding around the bottom here. Now, why would they do that? Well, you're watering, let's say leaves and everything is going, all the food matter, the compost tea is what I'm talking about, it's going under here, which is gonna bring an enrichment of microbes and earthworms and everything, because they love this. They will be underneath on the soil. Your vegetable plants will be sending their roots out through the bottom of the tote, and they will be collecting all that underneath, because they're gonna know that there's all those earthworms and all that beautiful, rich minerals for them to, to suck up is gonna be under here. So that's what they're gonna do. So you don't have to use this. It's like a raised bed, but you're not blocking your plants from getting into your soil. You're encouraging your plants to get into your soil if your soil's good. Let me tell you it works. I actually do this in my bird garden, but I do it on a smaller scale. I use floral pots and I cut the bottoms out or cut big strips out and I let the roots leave. And I sit them on the ground. This creates a collar. So when you get roly polies and they go through to eat your young plants, they can't climb plastic. Keep that in mind. And it just gives them that little bit of protection. Plus, when I water, I walk around watering, I know that my plants that I put in there are getting water. Without a doubt, they're getting water. And now we've got the tree that is coming down. But I think you've got the idea on other ways you can use a storage container. And you can go as big as you want. This one, like I said, this one is 18 gallons. You can get 30 gallons, you can get 45 gallons. They get really big. You get the size you want. 
But I have found this is the perfect size. You could line them up in your yard, especially, like I said, if you've got a gopher issue. You can line them up. You can make the holes on the bottom. You can plant anything you want. And all you do is you walk through and you water just the totes. You don't have to spray and soak the ground and waste all that water because the water will be going exactly where you want it, to your plant roots. So this has been really a lifesaver for a lot of people to keep those gophers out. And if it's just for watering issues, this will make sure your plants get the water and then you'll get the vegetables. I can't say anything bad about these. As far as how long they last for, if you don't leave them out in the sun dry, they can go for years. I've got some in my garden that's now well over five years old and they're still going strong. And even if they get a little crack, don't worry about it. Usually they're cracked because you pulled on it or you did something or you stepped on it. They last a long time. The trick is get something a little flexible. Those are a little softer plastic. And don't worry about them breaking down and causing you any issues. A lot of people don't know what's in their soil. These are a five, they come as a five and a two. Those are the same plastic numbers that they used in the grocery store for hot food and cold food. So you'll look, you'll go pick up a sour cream, cottage cheese container, yogurt, whatever you're gonna buy that's plastic in the grocery store, turn it over and you generally see a two or a five. The only one you don't really wanna grow in would be a three because that usually means they don't know where the plastic came from. It could have been old tires. It could have been something from old plastic bottles from oil. They don't recycle those, but these are clean plastics and they're not gonna break down until they get to over 150 to 180 degrees. Your soil is gonna get nowhere near that. Your soil is probably gonna be 60. It can get as high as 70, 75 degrees when the matter inside that you put in there, the leaves and everything break down, it will warm it up. And that is really good for young plants who really like it warm, but that's as warm as it's gonna get. I have been using toads for years. The microbes that are in there, the earthworms, they live in there all summer long, even in the heat. And they also live in there really good in the winter. With totes, you have a control as far as other rodents and insects and stuff, because you can stick stakes in the ground or in your toes and put some tool around it. Then you can keep your squirrels out as well as other rodents. So I hope I've given you an idea and how to use it, kind of like a raised bed, but what you're doing is you're using it as a framework and you're using it to keep out what's causing you not to grow that much, but doing it this way, you're gonna grow a lot of food. Try it. They're five bucks, six bucks sometimes. We've even gotten them cheaper than that. I went to the thrift store the other day, I picked one up for a dollar and I picked up a giant one for $2. So you can find them at thrift stores and keep an eye out when you're driving around the streets. I pick some up on the, on the street curbs. People throw them out when their lids break. I do use the lids for a lot of stuff now, but you don't need a lid to grow in. And then you make the holes where it's gonna work for you. Holes on the bottom, if you want your plants to touch your soil and grow. Holes on the side, if you're trying to keep tree roots out. Plus, if you're not trying to keep tree roots out, you can also leave an inch of water in, in the summer, one to two inches, and your plants will love you for it. So on those really hot days, they send their roots out to the bottom to get the water. You put the holes where you want to. I'll put a link on the bottom on the tool if you need to get tool, and you can check out all the other videos on how I grow in totes. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. The screaming you hear periodically are the Cooper Hawks that had three babies in the nest above my head. They're flying around right now, but he's just screaming off and on, looking down at me, wondering what I'm doing. Last year, they had five. Bye-bye. I wonder what they'll have next year. Oh, there they are. There's two of them right now, watching me.